Today with Sarah McInerney. Now, uncertainty around overseas travel continues to cause confusion for Irish pas- passengers, but some are willing to take the risk and board a flight to get to sunnier spots. And on one of the first flights out of the country yesterday was Owen Curry, who's editor of Air and Travel magazine and who flew to Malta. He joins me now on the line from Malta. And Owen, before you talk about your whole journey, set the scene for us, make us jealous. What's the weather like? Um, it's in 38 degrees yesterday, it's climbing <laughs> towards that today, midday, and Sounds looking out into the beautiful hot. harbour with those fantastic sandstone fortifications <laughs> that Malta put up. And uh, Malta, like Ireland, uh, is going through the unlocking phase and going through all the uncertainties of it, but uh, really finding out how the new post-COVID travel experience is going to work. Okay, so talk us through then the journey. We might start at Dublin Airport. What was the experience like from the car park to the terminal? All the emphasis is on contactless. Uh, things like, you know, you putting your credit card in the machine, getting into the car park, everything is on plate recognition, vehicle plate recognition. Masked, masks are encouraged to be worn through the airport. Uh, self-tagging, you will put your bag, you uh, then bring it over and ha- hand it over. Uh, staff are all masks. There's lots of dispensers for sanitizer, over 900 of them. There are masks for on sale at three euro from vending machines for people who don't haven't brought them already. The uh, queuing areas that people will be familiar with, the security queue area, uh, socially distanced, a bit like uh, it's done in the supermarkets, not that different. Things like uh, every second bay in the security where you go up and load your tray uh, is uh, kept uh, empty. Uh, everybody, everybody gloved and masked on the security side. Uh, social distancing not applied uh, at the boarding gate so much. But again, we have um, uh, everyone wearing masks and retail emphasis on contactless. Most of the food courts not open. The upstairs food court in Terminal 1, listeners will be familiar with, closed completely. Uh, that's the only area where masks are not worn, obviously, but the table is neatly socially distanced. Not that different from what's happening in the rest of the country, Sarah. Uh, obviously, the numbers in, in Dublin Airport are smaller now than they would be. You'd normally have 119,000 going through on a July day. It was 10,900 yesterday, considerably up from the 4,000 on Monday and that's because Ryanair effective return to flying was yesterday. Okay, and in the airport then you've laid out what it was like practically but what about the atmosphere? It was, uh, there was a buzz. Um, there was a sense that people uh, were getting back uh, doing what they were supposed to do. A lot of children, a lot of older people, um, you know, not elderly, but people in their 50s and 60s. You get the sense that most, a lot of what's travelling in those early flights are people who were on the cot on the wrong side of a lockdown. They family in one side or the other, and also the long term rather than the short term stairs, the people who have holiday homes and the people who have long term rentals. Uh, it wouldn't be a July buzz but it would certainly be what you defined on a quiet time in February or March in Dublin Airport, not that different. And we've been told that we may have to expect long queues at security because of all the different restrictions. Did, did you have any experience of that? Security was as quick as it wouldn't be normally. The one thing I would say about security and it'd be a criticism is that it does appear that the security staff are detailed to do the cleaning of trays. Security trays were an issue even before COVID. Um, I do, it did slow things down a little bit, not so much for the people whose bags went right through, but we all know that feeling as you watch your bag, does it go left or does it go right? If it goes left, uh, they want to interview you, they want to pick out something in it, they want to ask you questions. Um, when that happened, there was quite a long stream of bags to be uh, for the people who needed a second, a second glance or a second question. And the terminal, that's Terminal 1 security because I flew Ryanair. The uh, union structures and the hierarchies of Terminal 2 security would be quite different. So it is something that, uh, you know, while you're doing all the social distancing and making all those precautions, uh, the security tray area might be one that they could look at. And what about getting on the actual flight then on? Did it take ages to get on the flight because of you know, social distancing queues, etc.? Different policies here. Uh, Aer Lingus aren't doing priority boarding and Aer Lingus are actively discouraging bringing people cabin bags on board. Ryanair are saying uh, bringing cabin bags on board is OK. And in fact, uh, Eddie, Eddie Wilson was all over yesterday uh, news in Ireland yesterday. He's all over the news in Italy today uh, arguing that they were wrong to introduce a ban on cabin bags as a nation, as the aviation authority. But what we saw with Ryanair was the priority queue and the other queue working as normal 
and, and the main difference there is the contactless uh, showing of the passport and the scanning of the boarding cart. A lot of emphasis on online and doing as much online uh, from uh, the point of view of even e ordering food restaurant wise, mm. all of that. Um, contactless is the, is the word, is the word of new travel. And when you say the queues were working as normal, normally uh, when the gate opens, there can be a bit of a scrum to get in. I don't know why people are in such a rush to get on the flight, but they are. Um, did you see that? Uh, no, no difference in the way the queues assembled. Um, not so much a scrum. Uh, it wasn't a full flight. It would have been about 70%. Um, and that is what Ryanair is saying, is the occupancy, the load factor across their fleet. If it climbs a bit higher than that, uh, it would be hard to tell the difference between before and after. But uh, the Aviation Authority, uh, EASA's policy since June the 12th has been that social distancing is not uh, required on aircraft. Uh, so those some of those Twitter photographs that we've seen this morning of people standing up all together, all of that. It's not supposed to happen anymore, but it, it certainly has been happening. But uh, on board the aircraft may be the safest part of your intern journey uh, with the HEPA filters, the famous HEPA filters that filter the air 30 times an hour. Okay, so when you arrived then in the airport, um, that was Malta's International Airport, reopened for the first time yesterday, what was it like? Uh, 12 flights came in, some of them private. They were really glad to see anyone coming in. Again, they're getting up and running. People masked our visors. The visors, uh, some of them, the eating establishments in Dublin Airport using visors rather than masks as well. Uh, the, um, so what we had were in the queuing area, socially distanced queuing for immigration, very trendy overhead camera uh, was scanning everyone's forehead. Uh, there were three people in medical scrubs then and if they were either picking up people who'd showed a high temperature or people that were randomly selected for a second test. They weren't trained medical per personnel, according to the Malta airport people that I was speaking to. They also um, asked one gentleman to remove his woolly cap because presumably the temperature check didn't work on his forehead. <laughs> but it was all very orderly. Um, the huge number of staff, an awful lot of extra staff uh, hired to make sure at the collection area where the bags are collected, uh, people aren't congregating too closely together. As you uh, exit Malta, um, like most airports, has a big arrivals terminal where the meet and greet took place, all closed. Your channel straight out of the airport and the meet and greet where it's done is done in the open air outside. Again, numbers not as large as they uh, would be at the height of summer, but it's a, it's a learning process for Malta International Airport. Quite impressive, um, though, all of that high tech uh, thermal testing that's going on. And when you got to their uh, hotel then, was, were the social distancing measures strict or how did that look? Uh, pretty pretty much the same. Uh, staff masked. Uh, Malta's regulations are that you're not required to wear masks in the over air in closed spaces like shops you are. They are mandatory. Um, we were The hotel was only just open as well. Uh, the first uh, group of people in are the Germans. Everybody, are, everybody in tourism wants the Germans because of their low infection rate and their uh, unaffected economy. And uh, But low occupancy and things, notices everywhere to... Uh, uh, be careful, keep your distance. Uh, one person on the lift, unless you're a group, maybe a family group or a couple, you can get on together. Uh, the, uh, the pool was open and uh, well, as people who know me will know that would be my first stop everywhere <laughs> I go. Uh, regulation on the number of people in there. But that's not a problem with the small, it's a beautiful hotel here with a seven acres of garden, uh, the Phoenicia Hotel down to, and a walk down to the pool. So lots of outdoor space. Um, I, th uh, I think that this, this hotel would not would be able to handle almost all the regulations. Uh, uh, tired, hotels in tighter confines okay. uh, will be, uh, it would be difficult, uh, will, will, will face other difficulties. But things like the restaurants, again, um, the barcode to scan your menu. If you do want a menu, they'll hand you a photocopy. It's not going to be a menu that's going to be circulated. And um, all the protocols that we've seen in dining in Ireland as we reopened uh, being applied here. Uh, interesting one was that 
COVID on the flight, which, uh, you know, one or two people remove their masks. So you're allowed to remove your mask for eating. There isn't a lot of eating going on, a few bottles of water. But one of two people who did remove the mask were called out on the tannoy to, re to replace the mask immediately. So while social distancing not uh, possible on the Ryanair flight, um, they, uh, it, it, it certainly the wearing of masks was being enforced. And as I say, we will have a divergence between our two airlines on this. Aer Lingus are right. discouraging, actively discouraging cabin bags being brought on board. All right. Own Kari, editor of Air and Travel magazine. Thank you very much for joining me.